Nikita Dewan, Professor of Political Theory and Gender Studies at the Institute of Political Science at the University of Innsbruck and Director of the Gender Studies Research Platform Identities, Discourses, Transformations. Welcome. Could you tell us something about your recent work in the field of post-colonial studies? Um, I would say that my work uh, current work is primarily focusing on two central issues. The first issue is um, the question of decolonization, particularly the relationship of the post-colonial world with the legacies of European Enlightenment. So um, to put it in more precise terms, how do we deal with the legacies of post-colonial enlightenment like human rights, democracy, secularism, rule of law, sovereignty, cosmopolitanism. Now there is one approach uh, from within the post-colonial uh, school, uh, whereby any kind of engagement uh, with uh, the legacies of European Enlightenment is kind of critiqued and rejected as Eurocentric. So I know certain colleagues from the decolonial school kind of critique and accuse post-colonial theorists of being Eurocentric because they read scholars like Kant and uh, engage with European uh, Enlightenment. Uh, my approach kind of departs from this um, uh, this this kind of um, nativistic uh, idea of decolonization as purely going back to pre-colonial uh, epistemologies, cosmologies, or ethics. I think that um, the post-colonial world and the um, and the and the and the political, economic, cultural, social context that we find ourselves in are so deeply contaminated with the legacies um, of European Enlightenment that just undoing everything that's colonial uh, is not the way to decolonization. So here I take inspiration particularly from the post-colonial feminist Gayatri Spivak who uses the metaphor of child of child of a rape when she's talking about the, um, the very ambivalent and complex and difficult relationship of post-colonialism to European Enlightenment. And the challenge for us is how do we learn to love the child of a rape? How do we learn to use the critical tools that European Enlightenment has provided us, um, be able to use these critical tools in a critical way in order to rethink the legacies of the European Enlightenment for the post-colonial world. So this is my first project. This is the first uh, big major project that uh, I am engaging in. Um, how do we develop a critical theory of post-colonial studies, which does not rest on normative foundationalism, but rather on normative contingency. So we take the legacies of European Enlightenment, but at the same time question it. We question the tools. So it's like a little bit like revisiting Audre Lorde's um, statement that you can't take the master's tools to dismantle the master's house. And here the question is whether, again, to bring Audre Lorde and Gayatri Spivak together, whether one can do an affirmative sabotage of the master's tools. The second challenge that I'm struggling with is the question of uh, gender violence. Um, this was central in the colonial project, in the colonial discourses, whereby the situation and the position of the native woman was used and mobilized, instrumentalized as an alibi to justify colonialism. And uh, as has been pointed out by ma very many post-colonial feminists, th this is, this is, there is a continuity in, a pa in the pattern of um, these rescue narratives, whereby the, ge the gender violence in minority communities in post-colonial contexts is again instrumentalized uh, in order to stigmatize post-colonial societies, post-colonial practices, post-colonial um, nation states as barbaric, as primitive, as misogynistic, as sexist. And we've seen this in the recent uh, response to um, the sexual assaults that happened in Europe, uh, particularly in Cologne, um, whereby again the stereotypical um, images about uh, misogynistic Arab masculinity, victimized Muslim women were uh, uh, recycled in order to somehow deny um, um, humanitarian aid to vulnerable groups. So this is another issue that I am revisiting, um, drawing inspiration from very, very important scholarship that has already been undertaken by post-colonial feminists and revisiting questions of sexism, heterosexism, homophobia, um, uh, from a, from a, and what, what I argue is what we need is a multi-directional critique whereby we are able to somehow critically engage 
with uh, racist, um, uh, Eurocentric um, discourses, but at the same time also be able to critique um, practices within post-colonial communities, societies, and contexts that are um, that that are antagonistic to gender equality and gender justice. So to to summarize, um, somehow how um, the the challenges how do we negotiate between Eurocentrism and cultural relativism when it comes to issues of gender violence? Thank you very much. Thank you.